And now, in this lecture, we will find out the radius of the circle using two different methods. In the drawing, we have a circle. We know that the center of this circle is at this point, point O. The length of line segment AB is 6 units. Line segment AD equals to 18 units in its length. Line segment BC equals to 15 units. And this angle, angle BAD equals to 90 degrees. And finally, this angle, the direction angle ABC, which is equal to 90 degrees also. And our mission is to find out the radius of this circle. So we'll start with the first method. And uh, first of all, we'll do a construction. From point C, we'll draw a perpendicular on AD. So here, Uh, this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. We will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point C and AD is E. By doing this construction, we actually created a quadrilateral uh, ABEC. Inside quadrilateral A, B, C, this quadrilateral, we have one, two, three right angles. The sum of three right angles is 90 times three is 270 degrees, plus the missing angle, the missing fourth angle, this angle. In total, they must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. Therefore, the missing angle, this missing angle, must be equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles in this quadrilateral to 360 degrees. The missing angle must be equal to 90 degrees. So actually, we found out that in some quadrilateral A, B, E, C, we have four right angles. Any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a left angle, if not a square. So we will relate this quadrilateral A, B, E, C before right angles as a rectangle. Okay, quadrilateral A, B, E, C is a rectangle because it has four right angles. But we also know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say A, B equals to E, C. A, B equals to E, C. But it is given as an equation that A, B equals to 6. Therefore, E, C will be also equal to 6 units. Likewise, according to the same rule, that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, in rectangle A, B, E, C, this rectangle, side B, C must be equal to side A, E. B, C equals to A, E. But it is given as the equation that A, B equals to 13 units, therefore A, E must be also equal to 13 units. What is the length of this Line segment, line segment ED. From the drawing, it is very easy to see that ED equals to AD minus AE. Again, AD minus AE equals to ED. AD equals to 18 units. AE equals to 13 units. So AD minus AE is 18 minus 13, that is 5. So we found out that ED, line segment ED equals to 5 units in its length. In the next step, we will join points D and C together by a straight line. By joining points D and C, we actually created the green right triangle, the green small right triangle, triangle EDC. Okay. Triangle EDC is a right triangle. Because of the fact that this angle equals to 90 degrees. So we will implement the Pythagoras theorem on the right green small triangle, the triangle EDC. Okay. We 
מנהרת גרנד סמול טריינגל EDC by PT is a provision for Pythagoras theorem according to Pythagoras theorem in any right triangle the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars the hypotenuse the grand triangle is dc therefore the square of the hypotenuse is dc square and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars that is to say it must be equal to ec square plus ed square So, dc squared, that is the square of the hypotenuse of the green triangle, must be equal to ec squared. You see here that ec equals to 6 units, therefore ec squared is 6 squared, that is 36, plus ed squared. ED equals to 5 units, therefore ED square is 5 square, that is actually 25. In conclusion, we found out that DC square equals to 36 plus 25. So DC square equals to 36 plus 25 is 61. So DC square equals to 61 units. So we will take out all of this equation and we get the DC. The hypotenuse DC equals to the square root of 61 units in its length. We can write here that the hypotenuse DC equals to the square root of 61 units. Okay? In the next step, we'll join points B and D together by a straight line. By joining points B and D, we created the right triangle ABD. This is the right triangle ABD. So, we will implement the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle ABD. This right triangle ABD in order to find out the length of the hypotenuse BD. So, in the right triangle ABD, by PT is an evaluation for Pythagoras theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is BD. You can see here. Therefore, the square of the hypotenuse is BD squared. And it, it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it must be equal to AB squared. plus AD square. And put again, the right triangle ABD, according to the Pythagoras theorem, The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, BD square equals to AB square plus AD square. So BD square equals to AB square. AB equals to 6 units. Therefore, AB square is 6 squared, that is 36, plus AD squared. AD equals to 18 units 
as you can see, this given us the question, therefore 80 uh, square is 18 square, that is 30, uh, 324. In conclusion, from all this, according to the Pythagoras theorem, BD square equals to 36 plus 324, that is to say BD square, that is the square of the hypotenuse, equals to 324 plus 36. 36 plus 324 is 360. BD square equals to 360. We will substitute 360 by 30 times 6. 30 times 10. 36 times 10 is 360. So we will substitute 360 by 36 times 10. So BD square equals to 36 times 10. Here we take out all of this equation and we get that BD equals to the square root of 36 times 10. This is uh, to say BD equals to the square root of 36 is 6, so we can take out 36 out, uh, we can take 36 out of the root, uh, right, uh, instead of square root of 36, 6, inside the root we left uh, only with 10. In conclusion, we found out that BD, that is the length of the petals in the right triangle ABD, equals to 6 times square root of 10. So you can write here that the length of the protons BD equals to 6 times square root of 10 units. In the next step, we will find out the area of triangle BDC. Repeat again. We will find out the area of the green big triangle BDC. We write it down. The area of the big green triangle BDC. Here the squared brackets is the sign for the area. It means the area of triangle BDC. It must be equal to the base of the triangle times the height to the base over 2. Okay, the area of any triangle, and especially triangle, the green triangle BDC equals to the base of the triangle times the height to the base over 2. Here I must emphasize that the height to the base must create 90 degrees with the base. Okay, so the area of the green triangle BDC equals to the base of the triangle times the i to the base over 2. We will choose the base as BC. BC is the base of the triangle times the i to the base over 2. Emphasize again that the height to the base BC must create 90 degrees with the base. So we will extend side BC by a straight line, and from point D we will draw perpendicular to the extended BC. So here, this angle equals to 90 degrees. 
and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. We will define the touching point of the, ex uh, of the extended side BC and the perpendicular from point D as F. So DF is the height to the base, and then indeed DF creates 90 degrees with the extended BC. Therefore, we definitely can say that DF is the height to the uh, extended base BC. Okay. In the next step, we have to find out the value of the height in order to find out the area of the green triangle BDC. Okay. Here, by doing this construction, we created quadrilateral ABDF. Again, this quadrilateral ABDF. as one, two, three right angles. Again, quadrilateral ABDF as one, two, three right angles. And therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. That is to say, the missing angle here must be equal to 90 degrees. So actually we found out that the new quadrilateral ABDF has four right angles. And therefore, quadrilateral ABDF that has four right angles is a rectangle. Why? Because any uh, quadrilateral that has four right angles, we can relate to it as a rectangle. But we also know that the opposite sides of rectangle ABDF are equal to each other. That is to say, side AB equals to side DF. Side AB equals to side DF. It is given as the equation that side AB equals to 6 units. Therefore, we can write down that AB equals to 6 units. And from this equation, 6 equals to AB equals to DF. We will derive that DF is also equals to 6 units in its length. That is to say, the height DF equals to 6 units. Okay. Now we can easily find out the area of the green triangle BDF. The area of the green triangle uh, BDC. The area of the green triangle BDC. BDC. The area of the green triangle BDC. will be equal to the base of the uh, triangle. We choose the base as BC, and the length of side BC is equal to 13 units. So we can substitute the base BC by 13 times the height. We just right now found out that the height to the base that creates 90 degrees with the extended base BC it is equal to 6 units. So we can substitute the height by 6 or divided by 2. So the area of the green triangle BDC equals to 13 times 6 over 2. 6 over 2 is 3, and 3 times 3, 13, 3 times 13 is 39. So we found out that the area of the green triangle, triangle BDC equals to 39 square units. In the next step, I will present to you 
a new rule that will be actually rule number one, and we will implement the new rule in our drawing. According to the new rule that is rule number one, if triangle ABC is blocked by a circle, if a triangle ABC is blocked by a circle, So I will draw the moment of the wall. Here we have a circle that could be any circle. The center of the circle is at this point, it will be point O. Inside this circle, we have triangle ABC that is blocked by this circle. This is triangle ABC. The length of side AB is A units, side BC equals to B units in its length, and side AC equals to C units in its length. The center of this circle is at this point, point O, and the radius of this circle, it will define it as capital R. So here we have O, M, Point O is the, in, the cent, cent, in the center of the circle, point M is the point of the circle itself, therefore OM is the radius of the circle that we will define as capital R. So if a triangle ABC is, is blocked by a circle, like in this drawing, here I must emphasize that a triangle is blocked by a circle only and only if all its three vertexes line on the circle. Or only if all its three vertexes touching the circle. In this drawing you can see that this vertex touches the circle at point A this vertex touches the circle at point B and this vertex touches the circle at point B. Therefore, we can definitely say that this triangle ABC is blocked by a circle. So whenever you have a triangle that is blocked by a circle, like in this drawing, you can find out the radius of the circle that blocks the triangle by the following formula. So if a triangle ABC is blocked by a circle, then the radius of the circle that blocks triangle ABC will be, we define the radius of this circle as capital R, so capital R will be equal to A times B times C, that is actually the multiplication of the side lengths of the triangle by each other, A times B times C, 
over four times the area of this triangle, triangle ABC, that is blocked by this circle. Four times the area of triangle ABC. I repeat again that the squared brackets is the sign for the area. It means the area of triangle ABC. Okay, so the radius of a circle that blocks triangle, triangle ABC, it could be of course any triangle, will be equal to A times B times C, that is the multiplication of the side depths of the triangle by each other, over four times the area of triangle ABC that is blocked by the circle. Actually, we can implement rule number one in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing, we have the green triangle DBC that is blocked by a circle. I write it down. In our original drawing, the green triangle, triangle DBC is blocked by a circle. I repeat again that in order that triangle will be blocked by a circle, all of, all of its free vertexes must touch the circle or must lie on the circle. Here you can see obviously that this vertex of the triangle touches the circle at point B. This vertex of the triangle touches the circle at point C and finally the first vertex of this triangle, the green triangle BDC, touches the circle at point D. Therefore, we can definitely say that the green triangle BDC is blocked by the circle, and therefore, we can implement it rule number one. According to rule number one, the radius of the circle that blocks the green triangle BDC here we will define the radius of this circle as capital R. Here point O is the center of the circle, point M is the point on the circle itself, therefore OM is the radius of the circle, and we define OM as capital R. So capital R, that is the radius of this circle, will be equal to the multiplication of the side depths of the triangle by each other, that is to say BC times DC times BD that is actually the multiplication of the three sides of the triangle by each other, or the side depths of the triangle by each other over four times the area of triangle BDC. Okay, I repeat again that the squared bracket is the sign for the area. It means the area of triangle BDC. Now the only thing that is left to do is to put the data inside this uh, formula and we will find out the radius of this circle that blocks the great triangle BDC. That is actually also the answer to our question. We are looking for the radius of this circle. Okay? So capital R, that is the radius of this circle, will be equal to BC equals to 13 units in its left. So we substitute BC by 13 times DC. DC equals to the square root of 61 by its length. So we will substitute DC by square root of 61, and finally BD, side BD, the length of side BD of the green triangle BDC, according to what we have already found out, it is equal to 6 times square root of 10 units. Finally, we can summarize and say that the multiplication of the three lengths 
of the three sides length of the triangle is 13 times square root of 61 times 6 times uh, square root of 10 all divided by 4 times the area of triangle BDC and we have already found out that the area of the green triangle triangle, triangle BDC equals to 39 square units ok, so we actually found out the radius of this circle that we are looking for we will just simplify this expression and that is actually the answer to the question. If we will divide both the numerator and the denominator of this expression by 13. 13 over 13 is 1, so 13 will get cancelled and we left only the numerator with uh, square root of 61 times square root of 10 times 6 over 4 times and 39 over 13 is 3 ok and in the denominator we have 4 times 3 4 times 3 is 12 so I write it down we actually found out that the radius that we are looking for that is to say the radius of this circle that is capital R it is equal to the square root of 61 times the square root of 10 times 6 over 12 here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator of this expression by 6 in order to simplify this expression and we will get that capital R equals to the square root of 61 times the square root of 10 6 over 6 is 1 so 6 will get cancelled all divided by 12 so we will divide also the denominator of course by 6 12 over 6 is 2 in conclusion it found out that the radius that we are looking for that is to say the radius of this circle equals to the square root of 61 times the square root of 10 over 2 According to the algebraic identity, the, the, the square root of A times the square root of B equals to the square root of A times B, we will get that the square root of uh, 61 times the square root of 10 will be equal to the square root of 61 times 10, all divided by 2. So we actually found out that the radius of the circle that we are looking for, that is to say capital R equals to the square root of 61 times 10, that is actually equals to 610, all, all divided by 2. Okay, so the answer to the question is that the radius of this circle, it is equal to either the square root of uh, 610 over 2 uh, units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 12.349 units. Okay, so we finished with the first method. In the next step, I will present to you how to find out the radius of this circle according to the second method. In the second method, in the first uh, step, we we'll do the same thing that we did in the first method. That is to say, from point C, we we'll go perpendicular on AD. So this is going to cost to 90 degrees, and this is going to cost to 90 degrees according to our construction. We we'll define the touching point of the perpendicular for point C and AD is E. Again, in this quadrilateral A, B, E, C, we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be equal to 
90 degrees, I will not repeat on the same thing that we have already, we have already done in the first method. And uh, according to the rule that, uh, uh, so uh, quadrilateral A, B, E, C, the test for right angles is a rectangle, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal, uh, are equal to each other, that is to say AB equals to EC, but AB equals to 6, therefore AB also equals to 6. Likewise, BC equals to AE according to the same rule that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, but ABC equals to 13, therefore AE also equals to 13. And ED equals to AD minus AE, that is uh, to say it is 18 minus 14, that is 5. Okay, so until now, all the things that we done, uh, that we did here, we have already done in the first method. Now we'll continue with, with the second method. From the center of this circle, that is to say, from point O, we will draw perpendicular on code BC. Again, uh, actually here, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle it is also equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. We will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point O, that is the center of the circle, and BC as capital N. And we will define the touching point of the perpendicular from point O and AD as capital M. In the next step, I will present to you a new rule and we will implement the new rule in our drawing. So this actually will be rule number two. So, according to rule number two, if we have a circle that, that could be any circle, The center of this circle is at this point that we define as point O. And we have here code BC. Code BC could be any code. This is called BC. And from the center of this circle, that is to say from point O, we will draw perpendicular on BC. 
That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. We'll define the touching point of the perpendicular from point O and code BC as M. So we actually have from the center of the circle nice uh, perpendicular OM or OM uh, nice segment OM is perpendicular to code BC. Okay, so we can write down that according to rule number two, a perpendicular from the center of the circle Like in our drawing, the perpendicular OM to any code In our specific example, perpendicular OM is perpendicular to code BC But code BC could be any code Bisect the code Bisect the code. That is to say in our drawing it means that BM equals to MC. BM equals to MC. So whenever you draw a perpendicular from the center of the circle to any code it will bisect the code. In this case Perpendicular OM bisects code BC. That is to say BM equals to MC. Actually, we can implement rule number two in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing, let it down. We have perpendicular OM. This perpendicular to code BC, the perpendicular on N is to code BC. According to rule number two, it bisects code BC. Bisect code BC. Repeat again. In our original drawing, we have perpendicular ON to code BC. It bisect code BC. That is to say, according to rule number two, BN equals to NC. BN equals to NC. BN equals to NC according to rule number two. Here we will add it is according to rule number two. Okay, BN equals to NC. Okay. In the next step, we will focus on quadrilateral ABMN. The upper quadrilateral ABMN. Quadrilateral A B M N inside this quadrilateral A B M N we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to ninety degrees. And because of the fact that quadrilateral A B M N has four right angles, quadrilateral A B M N is a left angle. So I write it down, quadrilateral A, B, M, N is a rectangle because it has four right angles. But we also know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. 
Likewise, we'll focus on quadrimandual MN EC. Again, quadrimandual MN EC, the lower quadrilateral. Quadrilateral MN EC. In this quadrilateral MN EC, we have one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. This is to say quadrilateral MNEC has four right angles. Therefore, quadrilateral MNEC is a rectangle. Because it has four right angles. But we also note that the opposite sides of a rectangle MNEC are equal to each other. That is to say, ME equals to NC. ME equals to NC. So we can summarize here what we did until now. According to rule number two, we found out that BN equals to NC. But we have already found out that Vn it is also equal to Am. So we can write there Vn equals to Am. And we also found out that Nc it is also equal to Me. So we can write here that Mc, Nc equals to Me. And from this long equation, Am equals to Vn equals to Nc equals to Me, we will derive that Am equals to Me. AM equals to ME. That is to say, sign AM equals to sign ME in slang. Okay? In the next step, we will extend line segment AD until it touches the circle. And we define the touching point of the extended line segment AD and the circle as point F. By doing this uh, construction, we actually created here chord FD. Here, FD is a chord, as you can see here. Now it touches the circle, points F and D, therefore it is a chord. Actually, we do perpendicular. O N to code B C. O N is a perpendicular, it is absolutely a straight line. Okay, O N is perpendicular, it must be a straight line. So if you focus on the upper side of the straight line O N at point M, here the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles on one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So which angles we have at the upper side of the straight line O N at point M? We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees plus the missing angle. In total they must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. Therefore the missing angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay. Likewise, if you focus on the lower side of the straight line O N at point M, here also, according to the symbol, the sum of the angles in the lower side of the straight line O N at point M must be equal to 180 degrees. Which angles we have at the lower side of O N at point M? We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees plus the missing angle. In total, it must be equal to 180 degrees, according to the symbol. Therefore, the missing angle must be equal to 90 degrees. So we actually found out that OM is perpendicular to code FD. Again, OM, line segment OM, is perpendicular to code FD. Why? Because this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle equals to 90 degrees. I write it down.
OM is perpendicular to chord FD, therefore we can implement here rule number two. According to rule number two, whenever you have from the center of the circle perpendicular to any code, it bisects the code. So from the center of the circle we have perpendicular OM, and according to rule number two, perpendicular OM bisects code FD. Okay, that is to say, according to rule number two, Fm equals to Md. Fm equals to Md according to rule number two. But Fm consists of uh, minus segment FA plus AM. So this is to say FM equals to FA plus AM. So we can substitute FM by FA plus AM. Likewise, we can substitute MD in MD by ME plus ED. So we actually found out that FA plus AM equals to ME plus ED. But we have already found out that AM equals to ME. AM equals to ME. So those two line segments are equal to each other, therefore we can cancel them out because they are equal to each other. And we left only with FA that is equal to ED. If FA, line segment FA equals to line segment ED. But we have already found out that line segment ED equals to 5 units. So we can write here that ED equals to 5 units. And from this equation, FA equals to ED equals to 5. We will derive that FA is also equal to 5 units. F A equals to 5 units. In the next step, we will extend side B A by a straight line until it touches the circle. And we will define the touching point of the extended side B A and the circle as P. Here we can actually implement The old rule, rule number two, in our drawing. I will remind you what is uh, the meaning of old rule, rule number two, according to the old rule, rule number two, that is true in any circle. In any circle, if you have code AB, this is code AB that intersects with code CD, this is code CD, and the intersection point occurs at point O. So if code AB intersects with code, with code CD at point O, then AO times OB equals to CO times OD. Again, AO times OB equals to CO times OD. You can actually implement the old rule number two in our drawing. Why? Well, because in our drawing, we have code FD. This is code FD that intersects with this code, code PB at point A. I'll write it down. In our original drawing, code FD intersects with code PB. And the intersection point occurs at point A. Okay. 
Pentagenian, but we do not know him. Called FD intersects with called PB at point A. Therefore, according to the old rule, rule number two, we will get that FA times AD equals to PA times AB. FA times AD equals to PA times AB. This formula is true according to the old rule number two. FA equals to five units. AD equals to 18 units according to what is given as the question. PA is the missing nine segments, so we will leave it as it is. And finally, AB equals to 6 units, so we substitute AB by 6. In conclusion, we will find out that, or well, we found out that 5 times 18 equals to PA times 6. We will divide this equation by 6, and we will get that PA, the missing 9 segment, equals to 5 times 18 over 6. That is to say, PA equals to 18 over, 18 over 6 is 3, and 3 times 5 is 15. We found out that the missing 97 PA equals to 15 units. So I write it down, and PA equals to 15 units. In the next step, I will present to you a new rule, and we will implement a new rule in our original drawing. According to the new rule that will be actually rule number four. So actually Rule number four is true in any circle, so the circle that I will draw could be any circle. In any circle, the center of this circle is at this point that we define as point O. If called AB, this is called AB, intersects with called CD, this is called CD, and they are created between them at the intersection point 90 degrees. That is to say they are perpendicular to each other. And the intersection point that calls point E. I repeat again, if code A B intersects with code C D at 90 degrees, and the intersection point is at point E, then the following equation will be true. So whenever you have two codes that are perpendicular to each other, you can implement the new formula. First of all, we define the radius of this circle as capital R, so here OM is the radius of this circle that is equal to capital R according to our definition. So we write it down. If code AB is perpendicular. to code CD, then 
né? The following equation will be true. That 4 times capital R square, capital R is the radius of the circle, as you can see here, according to our definition, it will be equal to AE square plus EB square, EB square plus CE square. plus E D square. So repeat again. Whenever you have two codes that are perpendicular to each other, you can implement this new formula. If capital R is the radius of the circle, then 4R square equals to A E square plus E D square plus C E square plus E D square. Okay, so we actually can implement rule number four in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing, court FD is perpendicular to court PB. Why is perpendicular to court PB? Because of the fact that they create between them at the intersection point, that is to say, at point A, 90 degrees, as you can see here. So I'm writing now. In our original drawing, Called FD, this called FD is perpendicular to code PB. They are perpendicular to each other at the intersection point, this is to say point A. Whenever you have two codes that are perpendicular to each other, you can implement rule number four. Repeat again, code FD is perpendicular to code PD at point A. Therefore, according Therefore, we can implement the rule number four. According to rule number four, here we will define the radius of this circle as capital R, or n equals to capital R according to definition. So, according to the new formula, because of the fact that we are in here two forces that are perpendicular to each other, we we'll get that 4 times r square r is the radius of this circle, will be equal to fa square plus ad square plus pa square plus ab square. it again because of the fact that code FD is perpendicular to code PB we can implement it rule number four and according to rule number four if capital R is the radius of this circle as you can see here OM equals to capital R we get it for our square equals to FA square plus AD square plus BA square plus AB square again for our square R is the radius of this circle equals to FA square plus AD square plus P A square plus A B square. Okay. F A equals to five, therefore F A square is five square, that is twenty-five. A D equals to eighteen units, therefore A D square will be equal to eighteen square, that is three hundred twenty-four. Plus P A square. P A equals to fifteen, therefore P A square equals to fifteen square, that is two hundred twenty-five. And finally, AB equals to 6, therefore AB squared equals to 6 squared, that is 36. In conclusion, we found out that 4R squared R is the radius of the circle, 
equals to 25 plus 225 is 250, plus 324 plus 36 is 360. That is uh, to say for our uh, square equals to 250 plus 360 is 610. So 4 r square equals to 610. We divide this equation by 4 and we get that r square equals to 610 over 4. Here we take a hold out of this equation and we will get that capital R, the radius that we are looking for, equals to the square root of 610 over 4. That is to say, capital R equals to the square root of 610, and the square root of 4 is 2, so we can take 4 out of the root. In conclusion, we found out that the radius of this circle, the radius that we are looking for, that is to say, OM, that is equal to capital R, is equal to either the square root of 610 over 2 units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 12.349 units. Okay, so we finished with the second method. In the next step, I will summarize the lecture. We will start with the first method of those. So in the drawing we have a circle, the circle we know that the radius of this circle is at this point, point O. We also know that line segment AD equals to 6 units, line segment AD equals to 18 units, and finally line segment BC equals to 13 units. In addition, this angle PAD equals to 90 degrees, and this angle, angle ABC equals also to 90 degrees. Our mission is to find out the radius of this circle that we define as capital R. O M equals to capital R. In the first step, we did a construction, that is to say, from point C, we drew perpendicular on A, D. That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle equals to 90 degrees, according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point C and A, D as E. By doing this construction, we actually created a quadrilateral A, B, C, E. This quadrilateral A, B, C, E has one, two, three right angles. The sum of three right angles is 270 degrees plus the missing angle. In total, they must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. Therefore, the, this missing angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. So I actually found out that inside quadrilateral, quadrilateral A, B, E, C, we have four right angles. Therefore, for the other A, B, E, C is a rectangle. Because any one of the letters for right angles must be this rectangle, if not a square. So we relate to one of the A, B, E, C as a rectangle. But we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, A, B equals to E, C. But A, B equals to 6 units, according to what is given as the equation, therefore E, C must be also equal to 6 units. Likewise, according to the same rule that the opposite sides of the left angle are equal to each other, we get that B, C equals to A, E. But B, C equals to 13 units, according to what is given as in the equation. Therefore, A, E must be also equal to 13 units. What is the length of E, D? From the drawing, it is very easy to see that E, D equals to A, D minus A, E. AD equals to 18 units, AE equals to 13 units, AD minus AE is 18 minus 13, that is 5. So, the AD equals to 5 units, EC equals to 6 units, 
in the next step we join point we join points D and C together by straight line. In this way we created the green small triangle EDC. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the green triangle EDC. According to the Pythagoras theorem, here by PT is the relation for Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse in the small right uh, triangle is DC, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is DC square, and it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it must be equal to EC square plus ED square. In conclusion, we found out that according to Pythagoras theorem in the right great triangle, small triangle, uh, EDC, DC square equals to EC square plus ED square. Okay, so DC squared, that is the square of the hypotenuse, equals to EC squared. EC equals to 6 units, therefore EC squared is 6 squared, that is 36, plus ED squared. ED equals to 5, uh, to 5 units, therefore ED squared equals to 5 squared, that is 25. In conclusion, we found out that DC squared equals to 36 plus 25, that is 61. That is to say DC squared equals to 61. We took out, out of this equation and found out that DC equals to the square root of 61 units. So here this is important as DC, it is equal to the square root of 61 units. In the next step we join points B and D together by a straight line. By joining points B and D we created the right triangle ABD, this right triangle ABD, and then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem on the, this right big triangle ABD. So in the right big triangle ABD by PT is a version for Pythagoras theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the square of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is BD, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is BD squared. It must be equal to the sum of the square of the perpendiculars. That is to say it must be equal to AB squared plus AD squared. In conclusion, found out that going to the Pythagoras theorem, BD squared equals to AB squared plus AD squared. So BD squared equals to AB squared. AB is 6, so AB squared is 6 squared, that is 36. Plus AD squared. AD is 18, therefore AD squared is 18 squared, that is 324. In conclusion, we found out that BD squared equals to 36 plus 324. 36 plus 324 is 360. So in conclusion, we found out that BD squared equals to 360. Then we took out out of this equation. Or before that, we substituted, we substituted 360 by 36 times 10. So we described will be equal to 36 times 10. Then we took a root out of this equation. So we found out that BD equals to the square root of 36 times 10. We took uh, the square root of uh, 36 is 6, so we took 36 out of the root. In conclusion, we found out that BD equals to 6 times square root of 10. So here, the hypotenuse BD of the right triangle ABD equals to 6 times square root of 10 units. In the next step, we calculated the area of the green triangle BDC. Okay. The area of the green triangle BDC will be equal to the base of the triangle times the height to the base over 2. That is actually the area of any triangle, especially the area of the red triangle BDC. I must emphasize that the height to the base must create 90 degrees with the base. Okay. We choose the base of the red triangle BDC as BC. So we substitute that the base by BC times the height over 2. Okay. In order to find out the height of the green triangle BDC, we extended the base BC by a straight line, and from point D, we drew perpendicular of the extended BC. So this angle equals 90 degrees, and this angle equals 90 degrees according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point D and the extended BC as F. Okay? So here, DF will be the height to the base BC. Why? Because of the fact that DF creates 90 degrees with the extended uh, base BC. Here, this angle equals 90 degrees. 
and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. So now we must to find out, we must, we have to find out, not must to, but have to find out uh, the uh, length of the height. In order to find out the length of the height of the entangle BDC, we focused on quadrilateral AB DF. This quadrilateral has one, two, three right angles. Therefore, the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, inside quadrilateral ABDF, we have four right angles. Therefore, quadrilateral ABDF with four right angles is a rectangle. Quadrilateral ABDF is a rectangle. But we also know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, AB equals to DF. AB equals to DF. But it is given us the equation that AB equals to 6 units. So I can write here that AB equals to 6. And from this equation, 6 equals to AB equals to DF. We derive that DF is also equals to 6 units. That is uh, to say, DF, that is the i to the base, it is equal to 6 units. That is to say, the i to this and triangle equals to 6 units. Now we can easily find out the area of the green triangle BDC. Again, the area of the green triangle BDC will be equal to the base. We choose the base as BC. And BC equals to 13 units, so we substitute BC by 13. So it is 13 times the height. The height is DF, and DF equals to 6, so we substitute the height by 6. So the area of the green triangle BDC equals to 13 times 6 over 2. 6 over 2 is 3, and 3 times 13 is 39. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the green triangle BDC equals to 39 square units. Okay, in the next step, I presented to you a new rule, and we implemented the new rule in our drawing. According to the new rule, that it is true in any circle, if we have triangle ABC, that could be any triangle, that is blocked by this circle, as you can see here. What is the definition of a triangle that is blocked by a circle? It means that all the free vertexes of the triangle are touching the circle at different points. Here, yeah. this vertex touches the circle at point A, this vertex touches the circle at point B, and finally this vertex touches the circle at point C. Therefore, we can definitely say that this uh, triangle ABC is blocked by the circle. Okay? So whenever you have a triangle that is blocked by a circle, you can find out the radius of the circle that blocks the triangle according to the following formula. The radius of this circle that we define this capital R will be equal to A times B times C. A, uh, A is the length of side AB, B is the length of side BC, and C is the length of side AC. So A times B times C is the multiplication of the side lengths of the triangle by each other over four times the area of this triangle, triangle ABC. Okay, so we can actually implement rule number one in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing, we have the green triangle, triangle BDC. As you can see, this vertex touches the circle at point B, this vertex touches the circle at point C, and this vertex touches the circle at point D. Therefore, we can definitely say that the green triangle BDC is actually blocked by this circle, and therefore we can implement it rule number one. So, I want it down here that the green triangle BDC is blocked by a circle, and therefore we can implement here rule number one. According to 
Uh, rule number one is capital R is the radius of the circle. So capital R equals to the multiplication of the side lengths of the triangle by each other. That is to say it is BC times CD times DB. Again, it is BC times DC times BD. Over four times the area of the great triangle, triangle BDC. Okay? That is to say the radius of the circle that blocks the great triangle BDC will be equal to BC equals to 13 units, DC equals to the square root of 61 units, and BD equals to 6 times square root of 10 units. All divided by 4 times the area of the great triangle BDC. We have already found out that the area of the great triangle BDC equals to 49 square units. So actually, we have already found out the answer to the question. Why? Because the radius of this circle, the radius that we are looking for, equals to this expression. We will just uh, simplify this expression. Okay, and we finish the question. If we will divide both the numerator and the denominator by 13. 13 over 13 is 1, so in the numerator we will have to only square root of 61 times square root uh, uh, of 10 times 6. And in the denominator we have 4 times 39. So it is 4, and 39 over 13 is 3. So in conclusion, the denominator we have 4 times 3, that is actually 12. In the numerator, we have square root of 61 times square root of 10 times 6. Here we will divide both the numerator and the denominator of this expression by 6. 6 over 6 is 1, so in the, denominator, in the numerator we have only if, uh, 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 square root of 61 times square root of 10 over 12 uh, we divided the, the denominator also by 6, so 12 over 6 is 2. Okay, so we found out that the radius that we are looking for, the radius of this circle equals to the square root of 61 times square root of 10 over 2. According to the algebraic identity, the square root of A times square root of B equals to the square root of A times B, we will get that the square root of 61 times square root of 10 will be equal to the square root of 61 times 10, all divided by 2. 61 times 10 is 610 divided by 2. So we shall find out that the radius of this again, the radius that we are looking for, it is equal to either the square root of 610 over 2 units, so in terms of numbers, it is equal to 12.349 units. So we finished with the first method. And then I presented to you how to find out the radius of this circle according to the second method. In the second method, we did in the first step all the things that we have already done in the first method. That is to say, from point C, we draw perpendicular on AD. So this area equals 90 degrees, and this area equals 90 degrees according to our construction. By doing this construction, we uh, created quadrilateral ABEC. Inside quadrilateral AB, you see we have one, two, three right angles, therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees, and therefore what the other A, B, C is a rectangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, that is to say A, B equals to E, C. But A, B equals to 6, therefore E, C also equals to 6. Likewise, according to the same rule, that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, we'll get that B, C equals to uh, A, E. But B, C equals to 13, therefore A, E must be also equals to, equal to 13. What is the length of ED? ED equals to AD minus AE. That is to say it is equal to 18 minus 13, that is 5. 
So until now we did all the fields that we have already done in the first method from this uh, step. We continued with the second method, that is to say from point O, that is the center of this angle, we do perpendicular on chord BC. So this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to our construction. We define the touching point of the perpendicular from point O, and chord BC is capital N, and then we define the touching point of the perpendicular, of the perpendicular from point O, and uh, and the uh, AE SM. Okay, then I presented to you in your world that is actually rule number two and we implemented rule number two in our drawing. According to rule number two, a perpendicular from the center of the circle to any code bisect the code. The center of this circle is at this point, point O. From point O, we draw perpendicular on code BC. Code BC could be any code. According to this rule, rule number two, whenever you draw perpendicular to any code, to any code, it bisects the code. That is to say, perpendicular OM bisects code PC. That is to say, BM equals to MC. BM equals to MC according to this rule, rule number two. We actually can implement Rule number two in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing we have perpendicular ON to code BC. Therefore, perpendicular ON bisects code BC. That is uh, to say, BN equals to NC according to rule number two. Repeat again. Perpendicular OM to code BC by sex code BC. That is to say, BN equals to NC according to rule number two. Then we focus to quadrilateral AB and N. In, inside quadrilateral AB and N, this quadrilateral we have one, two, three right angles, therefore the fourth angle must be also equal to 90 degrees, and therefore quadrilateral AB and N that is four right angles. We will relate to it as a rectangle, and we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, AM equals to BN. Okay. So, quadrilateral A, B, M, N is a rectangle, and, and this rectangle, AM equals to BN. Then, the focus to the lower quadrilateral MN is C in the lower quadrilateral. M and you see we have uh, one, two, three right angles, therefore the four figure must be also equal to 90 degrees. Therefore quadrilateral M and E C that has four right angles. It is a rectangle, and we know that the opposite sides of the rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say M E equals to N C. Okay again that quadrilateral M and E C is a rectangle, and in the rectangle M and E C, M E equals to N C. So we can summarize what we did until now. We, according to rule number two, we found out that Bn equals to Nc. Bn equals to Nc, but we all, uh, we, uh, we already found out that Bn, we also found out that Bn equals to Am, so we can write here that Bn equals to Am, according to this, this formula. And we already found out that NC equals to ME, so we can write here that NC equals to ME. So from this long equation, AM equals to BN equals to NC equals to ME, we will derive that AM equals to ME. Side AM equals to side AE. AM equals to AE. Okay? Then we extended line segment AD uh, until it touches the circle at point F. And uh, by doing this construction, we created here called FD. 
Okay, we have called the FD here. And uh, we, we draw perpendicular ON on chord BC. So ON is perpendicular, this is absolutely a straight line. And we know that the sum of the angles from one side of a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So if we focus on the upper side of the straight line ON at point M, here the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. So which angles we have at the upper side of ON at point M? We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees, plus the missing angle in total they must be equal to 180 degrees. Therefore the missing angle must be equal to 90 degrees. That is to say this angle that is the missing angle must be equal to 90 degrees. Likewise we focus on the lower side of the straight line ON at point M. According to the same rule, the sum of the angles on the lower side of ON at point M must be equal to 180 degrees. Which angles we have at the lower side of ON at point M? We have this angle that is equal to 90 degrees, plus the missing angle in total that must be equal to 180 degrees. So, the missing angle here must be equal to 90 degrees. So, we actually found out that OM is perpendicular to chord FD. OM is perpendicular to chord FD. Why? Because this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle equals to 90 degrees. I'll repeat again. OM is perpendicular to chord FD. Whenever from the center of the circle we have perpendicular to any chord, it bisects the chord according to rule number two. So from the center of this circle, that is to say from point O, we have perpendicular OM to chord FD. Therefore, according to rule number two, it bisects chord FD. That is to say, FM equals to MD. FM equals to MD according to rule number two. But what is the value of FM? FM equals to FA plus AM. FM equals to FA plus AM. And what is the value of MD? MD equals to ME plus ED. MD equals to ME plus ED. So in conclusion, I found out that FA plus NM equals to ME plus ED. But we have already found out that AM equals to ME. AM equals to ME. So we can cancel out AM and ME in this equation because they are equal to each other. We left only with FA that is equal to ED. Here goes FA equals to code ED. But we have already found out that ED equals to 5 units. Here ED equals to 5 units. And from this equation, FA equals to ED equals to 5. We will derive that FA equals also to 5 units. Here FA equals to 5 units. So in the next step, we extended side BA by straight line until it touches the circle at point P. Then I reminded you the old rule, rule number two, and we implemented the old rule, rule number two in our drawing. According to the old rule, rule number two, if code AB intersects with code CD at point O, then AO times OB equals to CO times OD. Again, AO times OB equals to CO times OD. We can actually implement the old rule, rule number two in our drawing. 
when put in order drawing, we have chord FA that intersects with chord PB at point A. I repeat again. Chord FD intersects with chord PB at point A. Therefore, according to the old rule, rule number two, we we'll get that FA times AD equals to PA times AB. Again, FA times AD equals to PA times AB. FA times AD equals to PA times AB. According to the old rule, rule number two. FA equals to 5 units, AD equals to 18 units, PA is the missing line segment, so we leave it as it is, AB equals to 6 units. So in conclusion, we found out that 5 times 18 equals to PA times 6. Here we divided this equation by 6 and we found out that PA equals to 5 times 18 over 6. 18 over 6 is 3 and 3 times 5 is 15. In conclusion, we found out that the missing line segment PA is equal to 15 units. Here PA equals to 15 units. In the next step, I presented to you a new rule and we implemented this new the rule in our drawings. According to the new rule, this is actually rule number four. Uh, whenever you have two chords that are perpendicular to each other, you can implement uh, a certain formula in that uh, uh, drawing. That is to say, we have here chord AB that intersects with chord CD at 19 degrees. That is to say, Code AB is perpendicular to code CD, and therefore, if we define the radius of this circle as capital R, we get that uh, the uh, 4R square equals to AE square plus EB square plus CE square plus ED square. So, whenever you have two codes that are perpendicular to each other, you can implement rule number 4. Okay? And uh, in our, we can implement rule number four in our drawing. Why? Because in our drawing we have code FD that is perpendicular to code PB. For that reason, we can implement rule number four. I'll repeat again. In our original drawing, we have code FD that is perpendicular to code PB at point A. They are perpendicular to each other at point A, at the intersection point. Therefore, according to rule number 4, we'll get that FA uh, 4R square, R is the radius of this circle, will be equal to FA square plus AD square plus PA square plus AB square. Okay, then again, because of the fact that the two codes, FD and PB, are perpendicular to each other, we can implement here rule number 4. According to rule number 4, 4R four square, R is the radius of the circle, equals to FA square plus AD square plus PA square plus AB square. So 4R squared equals to FA squared. FA equals to 5, therefore FA squared equals to 5 squared, that is 25, plus AD squared. AD equals to 18, therefore AD squared equals to 18 squared, that is 324, plus PA squared. PA equals to 15, so PA squared equals to 15 squared, that is 225, plus AB squared. AB equals to 6, so AB squared equals to 6 squared, that is 36. In conclusion, found out that 4R squared equals to 25 plus 225 is 250. And uh, 324 plus 36 is 360. So in conclusion, we found out that 4 square equals to 250 plus 360. 250 plus 360 is 610. So in conclusion, we found out that 4 square equals to 610. We divided this equation by 4 and we found out that R square equals to 610 over 4. Here we took a root of this equation and found out that the radius that we are looking for, that is to say the radius of this circle, that is capital R, or M equals to capital R, it is equal to either, uh, it is equal to the square root of 610 over 4. So it is the square root of uh, 610 and the square root of 4 is 2. So in conclusion, we found out that the radius of this circle is equal to either the square root of 610 over 2 units, or in terms of numbers, it is equal to 12.349 units. Okay, thank you very much.